going beyond Jeopardy, though, the question is, what are we going to do with Watson? And one of the first things we're looking at is how to apply it in medicine. You know, just imagine if you're a physician and you're trying to diagnose problems with your patient, but there's millions and millions of medical journal articles out there. There's all this information, and it's doubling in size every few years. How can you possibly keep up with that? So we're looking at how to apply Watson in medicine and uh, help physicians make smarter decisions when treating their patients by giving them easy access to all sorts of medical literature and evidence and support that can help them ultimately make better decisions. So I'm going to ask Jennifer to take us through a little bit of how Watson analyzes things in the medical domain, uh, preferably with uh, some especially gross examples that might involve pus or mucus or maybe diarrhea, if we could. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right, so one of the great things that we get to do is to actually look at a lot of these really kind of gross body things that come out of your body parts. Sometimes there are pictures to go along with, with it, um, and we have to actually look at them. Um, but so here's an example. So one of the things that we're trying to do is, so in the medical domain, it's very different than in Jeopardy. Jeopardy, there's a very short, precise uh, question that they give you, and you're supposed to come up, look up somewhere, and come up with the answer. Okay. In medicine, usually the scenario description is what the patient comes to you with. Uh, it's much longer. Uh, so they usually we would look at a scenario description. A mother brings her five-year-old son into the office, the boy, and then it goes on and describes what the problems are. And usually you would you would be asked to come up with either what the, what is wrong with the patient or what should be a, an appropriate treatment or uh, any number of things. Okay. So let's just walk through uh, how Watson actually would analyze this. This is where the natural language processing part comes in, because Watson expected to read this and understand what the patient is trying to tell us. Okay. So what the, after the first sentence, we look at it and we say, okay, there's a son here, and the son is five years old. Okay, that's pretty easy. Then we look at the next sentence. The boy has po uh, papular and pos postular lesions on his face. So now you get another sentence. The boy has these lesions which are on his face. So now are we talking about two people or are we talking about one person? We need to be able to know that the boy is actually the same as the son. So we need to actually merge those. Okay? And we need to keep going and say, okay, now there is a serous honey-colored fluid extrudes from the lesions. So now we have fluid. Uh, oh no, we have uh, lesions that have fluid. But the lesions, they are actually the same lesions that we already talked about. Okay? Then we say, okay, now we have uh, a gram stain of the pus reveals these things. And the pus and the fluid are the same thing. Okay? They all use different words, but they're actually talking about the same things. And you really need to link them in order to get the whole picture. Otherwise, you have all these destroying things that you think are different and not linking them. Okay? And now we have uh, the organism has all these other features. And the organism is actually talking about this uh, gram-positive cocci. Okay? So, and you can notice that some of these are actually the organism is non-motile and catalase negative. So some of these are negated, some of them are positive. You need to be able to recognize all of these nuanced languages and be able to put together this picture. And so this is how Watson understands this big, long description of the patient. Okay, so Watson, this is the first step it does. And what it does go on to do then is to try and do diagnosis. That would be the first step. So unfortunately, I actually have a different example for this one. Here, uh, there's another person who actually developed uh, uh, non-bloody diarrhea, watery diarrhea with abdominal, abdominal cramps. So we, we extract the important parts. We have watery diarrhea, we have abdominal cramps. Right, so, so far we got lesions, pus, and diarrhea. You're doing great on my request. Yes. Okay, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Rats, right. Uh, and another important part of this description is that the colonoscopy then showed w yellow white plaques and membranes on colonic uh, mucosa. Okay. So Watson has this information about the patient, but what do you do with it? How does Watson actually go and figures out what's wrong with the patient? Watson asks questions. Okay, who does ask Watson ask questions to? Watson asks questions to the Watson system, Watson question answering system, because it knows how to answer questions. So. One of the things that you can do is say, oh, I keyed on this uh, 
this part about the uh, colonoscopy. So I want to know what causes colonoscopy to show uh, yellow-white plaques and membranes on colonic mucosa. Can you tell me? And uh, the Watson question answering system takes this question and will come back and tell you, oh, if you have a pseudomembranous uh, colitis, you would actually show this on the col colonoscopy. Okay? So now we think that the patient possibly has this disease. And, but, the, but the question is actually trying to figure out what kind of um, toxin causes this problem. So we're not there yet. We know what the patient has now. Okay? So now we keep going. And then we can't keep asking relevant questions. So that's a very hard part is asking the right questions, right? As scientists, we need to figure out how to ask the right questions, and so does Watson. So now Watson knows what the patient has. So we need to know, well, what kind of thing do you find if this person has, um, has this disease? And one of the things that Watson comes back with is uh, Clostridium uh, difficile, which is a bacteria that we find if a person has this disease. And then from that, we're able to link it to say uh, cytotoxin B is the toxin that is secreted if the patient has this bacteria in their body. And that's how we are able to link this entire picture together from the scenario that was given to us to the uh, ca possible QA answers that Watson is uh, considering by asking the right questions. Okay, I think that is it. Great, thank you. And so the last thing we have here is just a way that you can visualize Watson's thinking process in sort of what Jennifer was showing, but in a little uh, prettier way of uh, the factors on the left and the answers on the right and confidence flowing through these pipes. And so this just gives you a little uh, introduction to the Watson technology, what we're doing with it, uh, a little bit of uh, comparison with, with uh, your skills at answering questions and how we're now applying it in the medical domain. Thank you. Thank you.